and then Brooke Shields is easily the most controversial child star that ever existed. But she is just shocking and I do want to give everyone a trigger warning before I get into this video because the themes are very dark and can be pretty triggering. And so this is your warning. If you're sensitive to some of these topics, please click off now. So hey friends, welcome to my channel, Karina Lude, where we deep dive and break down the most iconic stars in history and uncover the dark secrets of Hollywood, removing the shield of glamour while exposing the reality. If you're not yet subscribed, please be sure to do so and turn your notifications on so you never miss an upload. In today's video, we will be talking about a lot of themes, including Brooke Shield posing bear, for, and I have to censor myself for YouTube because even if it's educational, historical, YouTube just does not care. They will monetize who they want to. So a lot of the words I want you guys to read in between the lines with a lot of what I'm saying just for monetizational purposes because I work too hard on this video, okay? She posed Bear at 10 for boy play, if you guys know what I mean. And with her mom's permission and consent. This video I'd rather say is mostly about her mom. Though Brooke Shields have expressed not having any kind of remorse Worse, or you know well she shouldn't because she was very young when things happened but she expressed that she has no regrets and that she would do everything all over again and that she was treated very nicely and all of these things it does seem like she's changing her tone a little bit because there's been a lot of exposure a lot more articles people the climate is completely different and they're not here for Brooke Shields just still glamorizing this but this is not a video to bash her because I still believe you can be 60, 70 years old if you were broomed, if you catch my drift, if you were broomed all your life, you grow up as an adult to still sympathize with some of the things that happen. Without further ado, we're going to get into her childhood. Brooke Krista Shields was born on May 31st, 1965 in Manhattan, New York to actress, model, mother, Terry Shields and business father, Frank Shields. Her paternal grandparents were from England, Germany, Scotch, Irish, and Wales, while her maternal grandparents were from England, France, Ireland, and Italy. So her mother grew up in a working class family, but her father grew up very wealthy from nobility. Following Terry's pregnancy announcement, Frank's family arranged for a financial settlement to be paid to her in order to have the pregnancy surgically terminated. So her father's family was pretty wealthy and they did not want this pregnancy to go on, you know, protecting their son from Terry or whatever, so they tried to pay her off, but she lied to them, took the money, she accepted the payment, but broke the terms of the contract by having the child. Frank married Terry, but they were divorced when Shields was five years old. Shields' mother made it clear she wanted her daughter to pursue a career in the entertainment industry when she was just five days old. Not five years old, five days old. Her mother already looked at her and saw money. This is a direct quote from her mother. She said, she's the most beautiful child and I'm going to help her with her career. Shields learned to play the piano, dance, ballet, and ride horses as a kid. Shields has stated that her first encounter with the paparazzi was in the grand ballroom of the Waldorf Astoria, New York, at the age of 12, stating that she stood like a statue wondering why they were all hired to photograph me and that she debuted at the Waldorf. She earned her high school diploma from Dwight Inglewood in Inglewood, New Jersey in 1983. A 1987 Princeton University alumni, she majored in French literature as an undergraduate, both the Princeton Triangle Club and the Princeton Cap and Gown Society of Sucking Rights member. Shields began modeling at the age of 11 months. She continued to be a successful child model under the representation of Eileen Ford. And we're going to talk about Eileen Ford's problematic nature, but Eileen Ford, who, according to Shields' lifetime biography, claims that she created her children's division specifically for Shields because of Shields. That she was just that stunning that she was like, hey, we need to have a children's division so we can keep her. In 1977, Shields filmed a scene with director Woody Allen for his film Annie Hall, but her scene was ultimately cut from the final cut of the film. Shields portrayed a child, I can't say the word, but a child worker, a lady of the night, worker of the night, in a brothel in the controversial 1978 film Pretty Baby when she was just 12 years young. This is via Rolling Stone. One scene in the film has her character brought out on a literal platter and auctioned off to the highest bidder. In another, she kisses the actor Keith Carradine, a grown man. Those whom God has united. Just my kind of man. And this is a quote from her saying, We had a first kiss. I had never kissed anybody before. Shields recalls in the film, I felt, oh my God, I'm supposed to know how to do this, but I don't know how to do this. It was such a beautiful experience. The set was so beautiful. I had never um, kissed anybody before. <laughs> and I, 
I, I looked like I was sucking on a lemon. I just kept scrunching at my face. And the director kept getting mad at me. And he said, would you please relax your face? I had to have this kiss with Keith Carradine. And I think he was tortured. He must have been just tortured by it because he's, you know, in his 30s and I'm 11. And, and he's thinking, oh, God, you know, I don't want to scar this kid. Keith took, some, took me aside and he said, hey, come here, I've got something to tell you. And I said, what? He said, after her <laughs> in the press. And Keith also, I gave him the side eye. Any man, woman, any film production, makeup artist, I don't care who you are, that participate in films like that, you cannot remove yourself from making that decision as an adult. I, I just refuse. I refuse. That's the point you have to say no. So I'm definitely side eyeing him and he probably does, he, it's possible he could do this in real life also. Look at Kevin Spacey. Life often imitates art, right? Just saying, because you couldn't pay me enough money to do that. Many question though how Terry, Brooke Shields' mom, could allow her young daughter to star in a film with such themes. For her part, in an interview, Terry said she knew it would be tastefully done and that anybody who calls it child corn has not seen the thing. But in the next breath, she said, I don't mind Brooke being called a sensual symbol, but Nymphette and Lolita rubbed me the wrong way, end quote. She was young and people were calling her a sensual symbol, if you catch my drift. Support this video because I already know it's going to be an issue. Even if you're watching on your TV, stop and put a thumbs up. Leave a heart in the comments even if you don't have nothing to say because I already know these type of videos don't get no play. And you, the audience and viewer, have to be the one that push it, that shares, that likes and comments and engage because YouTube, mm. So doing an interview, the interviewer asked her, do you know what it means to be good in bed after this movie? At such an young age, these interviewers were crazy too. Like Barbara Walters asked her for her measurements as a child. Like they were, the whole Hollywood, the industry interviewers, they just was exploiting her. Look, what are you measuring? High heels. Because we haven't really seen you standing next to someone. Yeah. The interviewer asked her, do she know what it means to be good in bed? The phrase. This is her response. When I'm sick and I stay home from school, propped up with lots of pillows, watching TV, and my mom's bringing me soup, that's good in bed. So poor her, she didn't even know. She didn't even know what it meant. She has expressed, as we stated in her adult years, that she has no regrets and that the film was art, saying, I think I learned to compartmentalize at such an early age, and it was a survival technique. That's not my life. That's not who I am. But where Shields is today isn't that far off from the tone of dismissal. A certain nonchalance that she adopted in a 1981 interview with Phil Donahue saying, I did it just as another job and I didn't take it seriously. Like I was going to grow up to become a night worker or anything. It was the best creative project I have ever been associated with. The best group of people I've ever been blessed enough to work with. She explained this to Vanity Fair. And on the Diane Rame show, she said, It was such a beautiful experience. Even though the film deals with some seriously adult issues and scenarios, including the kissing scene, she explained to the host how she always... and believe their daughter or they just turn a blind eye because they went through it too. I don't know. It's kind of giving that vibe because I know in your adult years where you can understand complexities, like you went to Princeton for God's sake and graduated, you understand. She talked about how she was taken advantage of after she left Princeton and was trying to get her life and career back on track. She claimed that after meeting with the director, they returned to his hotel room where, she prompt, where he promptly took off her clothes and jumped on top of her without her permission. She compares the experience to wrestling. During this time, she talks about the mental calculations she made because she was afraid that he would grab her if she tried to escape. So her survival instincts kicked in, so she just froze and let it happen until it was done. She said, God knows I know how to be disassociated from my body. I practice that, end quote. And according to Eileen Ford, toxic, here we go, who started the Ford Modeling Agency, she said at that time that, and I quote, she is a professional child and unique. She looks like an adult and thinks like one. Mm. Eileen Ford, ma'am, she was 12. So even she was adultifying Brooke. They all just were. Talking about how mature she is. That is brooming. 
if you don't know what I mean, okay? People just telling you how, oh, you're so mature for your age, you understand things that other people your age don't understand. Even when she was young, Brooke's maturity level far did surpass her years. It's possible because her mother's lifelong battle with addiction was a contributing factor, along with the fact that she began working at such a young age and was frequently exposed to people much older than herself. Anyway, Eileen Ford, founder of the Ford Modeling Agency, claims that adults treated Brooke as an adult because she looked and acted like one, so it wasn't their fault. <laughs> I kid you not, I can't make this up. This is just, I feel so bad for Brooke. She don't even know. She don't even realize how these people were playing with her. This is just so sad to read. Like, my heart is racing. In 1980, now Brooke, who is 14, was the youngest fashion model ever to appear on the cover of Vogue. Later that same year, Shields appeared in a controversial print in TV ads for Calvin Klein jeans. The TV ad included her saying the famous tagline, You want to know what comes between me and my Calvin? Nothing. In my Calvin? Nothing. She also said she didn't see the double meaning of the jeans campaign slogan at the time. She said, I didn't think it had to do with underwear, she told her. Like, she wasn't naive that, hey, it don't have to do with underwear, but she didn't understand the severity. And like I said, she was 14, so we can't expect her to know, you know? At the time of its release, several television channels decided to ban the ad, considering it too provocative. She said, I was a kid. At the point I was, I was naive. I was a very protected young woman, very isolated, end quote. You weren't protected, you weren't isolated, you were exploited. And I think healing starts with getting out of being in denial. And I think in her adult years, there's still this denial because you weren't protected. She likes to talk about how she was protected, but you were not. Thousands of men that like this type of stuff had her posters up on their walls. You know what I mean? When you go deeper, and I went to the deeper rabbit hole, Cora, and you know, the dark web, all that creepy stuff, there's thousands of men even today, in their adult age, that would have book shield and those type of scenarios on their wall and they watch those films. So no, you were not protected. You were not. Now here's the one that broke my heart the most, but I'm gonna tell you right now. Please, if you're triggered, <laughs> this is the point where you might wanna log off. In the years between 1981 and 1983, Brooke Shields, her mother, photographer Gary Gross, and he has a fitting last name because you are gross, you are disgusting gross okay so the photographer gary gross and playboy press were all involved in a legal battle in new york city over the rights to photographs that shield's mother had previously signed away to gross photographer larry gross took a series of controversial bare photos of brooke shields then who was only 10 she was 10 for the playboy press magazine sugar and spice and that whole magazine was toxic because it wasn't just brooke that was featured in this magazine but we're going to talk about that later. In 1975, with Terry Shields' permission, Shields appeared in the pictures without anything on, wearing makeup and oil, both standing and sitting in a tub. Oh, my heart can't even take it. Now, I don't know how dark... Now, at 10, she was 10. She was then directed to pose standing and sitting in a bathtub with two images showing broke full frontal and completely exposed. I know. When I tell you these videos, sometimes I be needing to cleanse from them. Listen, listen. Gross told the Daily Telegraph of one of those photos in 2019, saying the photo has been infamous from the day I took it and I intended it to be. He added that the images weren't meant to be corn, you know, but conceded Brooke was supposed to look like a sexy woman, end quote. She was 10 and was supposed to look like a sexy woman woman yeah i don't care what no one says this is the same thing with the whole r kelly theme don't worry i'm gonna do an updated for Leah. i know there's been a lot these parents are disgusting disgusting i, I don't even have a word the issue she appeared in reportedly also contained three other pages featuring photos of what they call nymphettes defined as attractively and sensually mature young girls it's unclear how old the girls in the photos were, but they looked, some even younger than Brooke, with heavy makeup on, and some looked about preteens, where they had their legs opened, and you can see bare. Like, I'm telling you guys, stomach wrenching. 
stomach wrenching and these photos are all over the internet i i can't even imagine new york's courts sided with the photographer because of an unusual provision of the state's legal code first of all i think the judge was upset because the judge was a man so he sympathized with the photographer i think he was upset with the mom and hated the mom so he wanted to punish her further but i think his ruling was very unfair and made me side eye the judge too let's continue the new york state supreme court dismissed the lawsuit justice edward greenfield saying the photos were not erotic or corn except to possibly someone's perverse mind <laughs> terry is trying to be maternally protective but exploitative at the same time he added that even though the photos could cause brooke personal embarrassment they wouldn't do irreparable harm and criticized Terry for suing over the photos while allowing Brooke to start and centrally charge films. How can you determine what's going to cause someone irreparable harm or not? You're not them. I, this is shocking to me. He accused Terry of living through her child and trying to engender an image of Brooke that was centrally provocative and exciting while attempting to preserve her innocence. Terry is trying to be maternally protective but exploitative at the same time. She could not have it both ways, Justice Greenfield added. Brooke and her mother had a rather unusual dynamic and they frequently butted heads. As Shields told USA Today, she and her mother had a super close relationship. The love was so intense. She came before anybody. I thought she was God, Brooke Shields said, and she continued. I thought she could change the weather. It was, an, it was us against the world, Shields recalled. Her mother stormed away from her after she called her mother dumb in a heated argument, so they would get into fights publicly, and Brooke was sometimes, you know, a little sassy with her mother. Another time when Terry lost her cool on set and started swearing, young Brooke crept up behind her and taped her mouth shut. Terry's reputation for having a short fuse was only part of the story. She also had a habit of drinking excessively. Even when she was responsible for watching Brooke on set, in fact, she was once banned from the place of employment where Brooke was present due to her temper and drinking habits. Even as her loved ones rallied to defend her because Brooke was her mother's biggest defender, I believe she really, really loved her mom. And she defended her mom. She don't want to see her mom in that exploitative light. So she defend her and it's just a daughter protecting her mom. But she has to heal and see it for what it was. Would you be a mother like your mother? I think so, yes. I mean, I think I've learned from my mom. But what, what about the people who say she had no childhood? And accuse you. You took away her childhood. But I'm still going through my childhood, so I can't say what I did. Sitting here like this is going through your childhood? Not about it. I started thinking things like, oh, it was a different time. I was sticking up for my mom to my girls. Then my daughter turned it around on me and said, well, would, you know, would you let me do it? And I thought that was just such a telling thing. After this wild year ended, she held an intervention to convince her mother to give up alcohol. Brooke then, 13, decided she had to take extreme measures to keep her mom alive. 13, you're doing an intervention with your mom. Wow. She would later tell how Terry had taken her out to bars when she was just a baby and how she frequently came home from school to find her mother completely inebriated. Mm. Let's get into her later career. By the time she was 16, Shield's double career as a provocative fashion model and child actress had made her one of the most recognizable faces in the United States. Her day rate as a model was reportedly $10,000 a day. And according to a cover story in Time from February 9, 1981, Shields graced the covers of three different Vogue publications in 1983, Paris Vogue in September, American Vogue in October, and November and Italian Vogue in December. At the time, Shields was a regular at Studio 54, a popular New York City nightclub. After two decades of movies, her best-known films are still arguably The Blue Lagoon, which included bare scenes between teenage lovers on a tropical island. I did movie reviews for Pretty Baby and Blue Lagoon already. I'll put them in the end cards. They're a little old quality. I'm just giving y'all a heads up. <laughs> but you may enjoy them. And An Endless Love, which was, oh, breaks my heart, though she's stunning in it. Via Rolling Stone, Shields, who had not been sensual with a man at the time, described it as reality show, where they wanted to sell my actual sensual awakening. So it was like they made this movie to kind of broadcast her losing it because <laughs> everyone was so invested in her purity at that time. 
trust me trust me it was weird but all hollywood reporters they were investing when she was gonna lose her v card and this movie was kind of them fantasizing of that happening the movie endless love just terrible that year she continued that year she also shot endless love helmed by the late italian filmmaker franco Zeffirelli, who became so frustrated with shields during the movie's intimate scenes for not giving him what he wanted that he began twisting her toe Zephyr Rally kept grabbing my toe and like twisting it so that I had a look of, I guess, ecstasy, but it was more angst than anything because he was hurting me, she remembers. We're gonna get into her relationships and try to wrap this up on a more lighter note. Let's talk first about her and Michael Jackson. And I did a breakdown for Michael Jackson. Also, you guys will love it. Jackson stated in his 1993 interview with Oprah Winfrey that he was dating Shields at the time. Shields has stated that Jackson asked her to marry him numerous times and to adopt a child together. In a conversation with Rabbi Boteach in 2001, Jackson said of Shields that I was one of the loves of my life. I think she loved me as much as I loved her, you know? We dated a lot, we went out a lot. Her pictures were all over my wall, my mirror, everything. And I went to the Academy Awards with Diana Ross and this girl walks up to me and says, Hi, I'm Brooke Shields. Then she goes, are you going to the after party? I go, yeah. Good, I'll see you at the party. I'm going. Oh my god, does she know she's all over my room? Michael thought to himself. So we, we go to the after party. She comes up to me. She goes, will you dance with me? I went, yes, I will dance with you. Man, we exchanged numbers and I was up all night singing, spinning around my room. Just so happy. It was great. End quote. On July 7, 2009, Jill spoke at the memorial service for Michael Jackson. She stated in that speech that she first met Jackson when she was 13 and the two instantly became friends. Jill said, Thinking back to when we met and the many times that we spent together, and whenever we were out together, there would be a caption of some kind, and the caption would usually say something like an odd couple or an unlikely pair, but to us, it was the most natural and easiest of friendships. Michael always knew he could count on me to support him or be his date and that we would have fun no matter where we were. We had a bond. Both of us needed to be adults very early, but when we were together, we were two little kids having fun." End quote. Now, as far as her relationship, she started dating Liam Neeson, a movie star that was 13 years older than her. They look odd. They look odd. They looked odd. I'm sorry. After she graduated from college, that's when they dated. They rapidly escalated in intensity. In fact, after dating for only three months, Liam proposed to Brooke. However, this ended up causing more suffering. Neeson stopped answering his phone and ignoring her calls shortly after. Shields has been married twice from 1997 to 1999. She was married to tennis player Andre Agassi. The couple had been together since 1993. Shields' time spent with Agassi provided her with much needed stability. And according to her, he gave her her first taste of freedom by encouraging her to spend time apart from her mother. As she became more self-reliant, Agassi was there to help her with the little things. Agassi soon revealed himself to be controlling and possessive just like her mother. Over the course of their relationship, Agassi eventually admitted to Shields that he had been using substances, illicit substances. Shields was hurt and perplexed by his decision to keep this secret from her, especially since she had accepted his other revelations with such ease, such as the fact that he was bald and always wore a hairpiece. Be glad we don't have children, otherwise I would not have made this easy for you, he said to her during their divorce. Following her divorce from Agassi, she married television writer Chris Henchy in 2001 and they had met through common friends in 1999. They have had two daughters and live in Greenwich Village, New York City. Shield's relationship with her mother had evolved greatly by the time she started her own family. Shields had fired Terry and hired a new manager to handle the business finances. She hoped that by improving communication, they could strengthen their bond. However, just as that appeared to be happening, Terry began exhibiting terrible symptoms. The New York Times did not hold back in its scathing obituary for Terry Shields after her death in 2012. It detailed her battles with alcohol, her controlling behavior, and her criticism for the underage photos and the film Pretty Baby. This incident inspired Shields to write her autobiography, There Was a Little Girl, in which she discussed the difficult parts of her upbringing, in a way, defending her mom. Like I said, I don't blame her for defending her mom at the end of the day, that's her mom. And people like to defend their parents, you know, we don't want to see our parents in such a bad light. But you have to heal and you have to hold them accountable. That's just how it is to heal. And I hope, maybe, eventually, she heals. Because she said she would never put her daughters in this position. The irony of that. She would never let her daughters play in movies like Pretty Baby. But your mom did it for you. You love your daughters so much that you would not exploit them like that. But your mom did that to you. 
and you have to accept that to heal you know it's tough but i don't know what else i can add please don't forget to thumbs up this video and leave a comment share on your social medias your facebook pages with your friends family whoever may be interested i love you guys so much if you like the music you're listening to the link is in the descriptions for my brother comment below who else would you guys like to see i have some interesting breakdowns lined up for you guys so if you like this one be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my future videos until next time